Joe Blake died recently on February 15th, 2022. Most people don't realize his impact on the, the development of the community of Highlands Ranch in so many areas at this point. Joe himself said that he had very little skills coming into the job when he started in 1980, and yet we found his ability to work with other people, make everyone feel special, is what made him a much unique character in the development of Highlands Ranch. This video tribute will point out some of the areas of Highlands Ranch and how they got developed that Joe had a role in, in his most unique way of finding consensus and getting things done at this point. He truly led a wonderful life in many areas. This focuses on what he did to make Highlands Ranch the unique community that it is today. I hope you enjoy. Here's what some community leaders who worked with Joe Blake had to say about him. My name is Gary Davis. I served as community manager for the Highlands Ranch Community Association for 20 years and spent many of those years working alongside Joe Blake while he worked with Mission Viejo Company and then later on Shea Holmes. Joe went on to serve the greater state of Colorado and the Denver metro area and many other capacities, but he left a real mark on Highlands Ranch. He was one of the world's greatest mentors and he was the definition of gentleman. A diplomat, he treated everyone with respect and dignity, and he always greeted you with a friendly smile and would ask about you and what was important to you. He would know your family's names and know what made you tick. When I grew up, I want to be like Joe Blake. That's what I tell people often when they ask me where my career was going. And yes, the world needs more Joe Blakes. Colorado, about to get some thoughts from an early executive with Mission Viejo here named Joe Blake. So Joe, thank you for coming and sharing some thank thoughts you, about your earliest memories in the almost 20 years that you worked for yes. Mission Viejo, who eventually then became Shea Holmes. Right. You have many aspects of your education and career before that, right. and many things that you've done after that right. as well. And so we'll just touch on those just briefly, but Great. The focus of this today, we'll talking about your time here in Highlands Ranch and what roles you played to Great. get this lovely community uh, developed uh, from Great. an infrastructure point of view. And anything else you'd like to tell us? Years, and it was during that time uh, that I that I heard, you know, that that Mission Viejo, which had been building this community in Aurora, Mission Viejo, Aurora. Uh, had been looking at the possibility, and then of course did, uh, take an option on the Marvin Davis option about the acquisition of Highlands Ranch. How John heard about the HR job. Um, but the man that I knew uh, who brought me the, the opportunity to be with Mission Viejo was Jim R Richardson, Nicholson, Jim Nicholson, who uh, was practicing law with the law firm that Mission Viejo was using to get its entitlement started, to get its planned unit development approved. And, and Jim called me and said, hey, Joe, they're looking for someone with a legal background, someone who's been familiar with, uh, with local government and, and uh, has, deals with the legislature. And also, they'd like to have someone who's kind of a local boy who can help uh, guide them around on some of the local issues here. They had, as I recall, they had taken this option on Highlands Ranch in, uh, in 19, um, 1978 uh, with the understanding that they had, would have two years within which to get the planned unit development approved and through the county. So they brought a fabulous team of, of individuals from California to work on that with a fabulous group in Douglas County. Joe talks with Phil Riley. So I, uh, I heard from Phil Riley, who was the president of, of uh, Mission Viejo Company in California. 
he had me come out to uh, to California to meet with him. Then my wife and I came out, Elizabeth and I went out, and they offered the job, and it was unbelievable, I mean, the opportunity. But I have to say, um, I had no background. Joe claims to have no expertise in the areas needed. Uh, no real expertise in any of the things that I was being called upon to do. I, I was, um, the, the title was uh, senior vice president for, just senior vice president, but under that, was all of the government relations, all of the legal. I was inside count. And then I was responsible f for the finance uh, side of this, the, the issuances of bonds, the mortgages. So for when did you start officially with Mission Viejo? Yes, I started officially in uh, January of, uh, of 19, oh, 1980. And uh, stayed there with Mission until uh, admission at the time was owned by Philip Morris. You, you, you know, you look at these roads, you, 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 Highlands Ranch Boulevard, all of those roads were built at capacity to begin with because these, these were real visionaries, the people. Joe was involved in a C-470 delegation. So one of the early things we did, we built a delegation, including Littleton, including others further west, the elected officials, and would annually go back to meet with our Washington representatives to say, we need to have C-470 funded. That was a big deal. Was Joe talks about working with Littleton to get things done. So there was, there was a lot of, there was a lot of tension, and, 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 and appropriately so. You're going to be building a lot of traffic on Broadway, because people are going to be coming out that way. Um, but we worked together on a lot of different things. Did you have personal involvement in that? I'm, Don't be modest yeah, here. I did. Well, I did because, you know, we needed to work things out. We just, we needed to make them work. And I'm told that that's your skill in getting groups that might have conflicting thank points you. of view well, I, in finding a middle ground. I, thank you. I, I, thank you. I enjoy doing that. Um, I, I, uh, it's something that when you, when you can see the benefits for everybody and you can get everybody to say, okay, let's, let's see if we can't get this done. Uh, Joe talks about his involvement in getting Centennial Water established. When we, when we were going to build uh, Centennial Water and Sanitation District, and I chaired that also for all those years, so, by the way, we set up separate uh, uh, metro districts. We had five metro districts, and we had uh, service districts for the water and sanitation district and a, and a master district called Centennial Water and Sand. Joe talks about how South Platte Reservoir got built. But then we also, we worked, it was funny, Kiewit was building, uh, they had a, a, a plant over where the South Platte River, where the South Platte Reservoir is today. And I remember we, we talked to them and said, hey, uh, you're gonna be getting out of there one day and we would like to build a reservoir there. This is Centennial Water and Sanitation District. And construction companies are wonderful. Kiewit's a good company. This is what became the uh, South, South Platte, Platte Reservoir. Reservoir. Yes, yeah. and we said, uh, well, wouldn't you like to, work? no, we don't want to work with you. So we said, all right, we'll, I'll tell you, we don't want to do this, but we'll do it this way. We'll condemn you. And then they said, well, why don't we work together? That's a good idea. Let's work together. So that is a great story. And by the way, um, I think that was completed in 2007. And and I was fortunate to come back out and ask to speak uh, at that. And I pointed out, I, I, as I remember, I'm doing this from a, the, uh, it's about 4,500 acre feet of storage in there. And it's all based on runoff. I mean, it, it, it's a- it's all, sur it's all surface. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's right. I mean, it's, it's a, uh, it's, it did not have a priority going into it. We had to get a lot of, ditch rights uh, to, in order to get that water uh, there. It's been an enormous success, enormous success, enormously expensive because the water goes under the Platte River, goes under 
Broadway goes up into McClellan and then under C-470 and into the into your my water plant. my water treatment plant. The one named after you. After me. So, uh, but I, I bring that up because it was at that point probably the only successful water project, storage project of its type that had been built in the previous 40 years when you think about it because you just don't get those things done. I mean, they're very difficult. But, and by the way, I loved water. I, the whole issue of water, we had John Hendrick here. We had a fabulous board, of Centennial. Fabulous. Terry Krzyznik. I mean, these, these were people that were just, they were brilliant. They were, Later on, Rick McClough. Yes, Rick McClough. In 86 started. Yes. And he had uh, very nice things to say about you. Oh, and your involvement Thank you. in making these things work smoothly. Well, it was, it was fantastic. Joe used his mortgage industry contacts to get favorable commitments so that Highlands Ranch could offer uh, attractive mortgages for the first owners. So those, are the, those were the fun things. Those were the fun things. Um, and your involvement was Primarily from a legal point of view. Well, it was from a legal point of view. I also together that had conflicts that needed to be resolved. Yes, and and the the, the bond issuances early on, uh, the mortgages that were being made. My responsibility was to get forward commitments so that when we opened, we could offer, in fact, a fourteen and a half percent buy down. Um, and 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 because of my time in the mortgage insurance business, I knew the people in the industry so I could go out and use, use those contacts. Joe talks about how he got a sign up on C-470 promoting Highlands Ranch. But what they had in California on Interstate 5 <clears throat> were five signs that said next turn Mission Viejo. And they said, Joe, you get us signs. We want signs <clears throat> on C-470. Mm -hmm that say Highlands Ranch next three X. So I worked with the highway department. And we can't, we, we'll do it. Joe, we'll do it if you guys will incorporate because we don't do it to uh, mm. deal with the development. We're just not gonna do that. And we tried everything we could. <clears throat> I had the funniest thing happen. I was, I, uh, I've worked with virtually all the governors since day one. <clears throat> and I was at the governor's mansion when, when Governor Romer was governor. And I found myself sitting next to the head of RTD and the head of the highway department. And I knew them both, and I, this just kind of came to me. And I, I made this up, literally made it up. I said, you know, to the RTD guy, I said, you're, you're, we're building all these park and rides, and and people get confused. I made it up. People get confused. They don't know where they are. Uh, wouldn't it be great if you identified the park and ride and gave it a name, like Highlands Ranch? Wouldn't that be it? And he said, you know, Joe, that's probably a good idea because it's a new area and we, we'll do that. And then I, literally, this was a 20 minute conversation. And I said to the highway, head of the highway department, now look, they're gonna put this sign that says uh, Highlands Ranch Park and Ride. We need a sign up on the road that says Highlands Ranch Get off the University. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I, and I remember when they came out and put the sign up, I took my family out on the, on the north side of C-470, of, 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 of C-470, to point out what was, what was happening there. It was, it was such a joy, and, we, and I finally got the dead gum thing done. Jeff Kappas of Shea Homes had this to say about Joe Blake. Joe talks about how Highlands Ranch Post Office came about. But, but you know, getting, to, getting the name Highlands Ranch, we talk about that. 
um, y y y it's all accepted now. I mean, it's, it's all accepted. But you really have to peel some of this back to say, well, where, where is it, you know? Because when we started, we were in the Littleton uh, postal zone. We were in 80126, Littleton, Colorado. And Jack Sauer was the wonderful young postmaster in Littleton. And I went over to say, Jack, I, we, we really need, you know, we're trying to make this hometown USA. We really need to say Highlands Ranch. He said, oh, you can't do that, Joe. You, you know, there, there is no place. You're not official. And so I said, all right. So, uh, Jack, let me ask you a question. <clears throat> When you sort mail, do you sort by Littleton, Colorado, or do you sort by zip code? Oh, we said we sort by zip code. He said, here's an idea. Why don't we just say Highlands Ranch, Colorado, 80126? You'll, you'll, you don't care, do you? No, we really, and I'll, but he said, if I do that, will you do, will you do gang um, uh, postal delivery. We don't want to have to do delivery to all your dadgum homes out there. My words, not his. So that's, I said, you need that? That makes total sense to me. We need Highlands Ranch, 80126. We got a deal. So that's how Highlands Ranch got started in the postal zone. And this is prior to the post office at Quebec and it, it, I was just going to say, that the first time, the first time, the name Highlands Ranch, Colorado, ever appeared was at that post office down the way on Quebec. Which ultimately became multiple zip codes. Correct. But later on. <laughs> but we're still now recognized yeah. as Highlands Ranch. So we did everything we could to get the name Highlands Ranch involved. You know, getting getting the first high school named Highlands Ranch here was uh, not the easiest thing in the world. But it uh, it honored our history and it honored and, this, and, and working with the Douglas County School District uh, was fun getting that done as well. Communication with the community, particularly in the early days, was so important. Yeah. Oh, I mean, and, and, and at, at, uh, at the uh, branding uh, time, uh, we would have the whole community out for a big community uh, picnic. I mean, it was a big deal for three or four years. You'd have, well, the initial, you might have had 50 people, then you had 400 people, then you had maybe 1,000, and then, you know, that's one thing that you learned in this, um, and, and that is that you had to retell the story all the time because you had people moving in who were not aware of what the promises were, of what, of what, what we are trying to accomplish, and so, our communication with our own constituents was a really important aspect of why we were so successful. Joe talks about Mission Viejo's emphasis on celebrating the history of the area. You know, you, 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 I, thank you for bringing that up because the way in which Mission and those early plans um, celebrated the history of, of Highlands Ranch, that mansion, Everything south, you know, that's left open. That's left open. Uh, the 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 windmill, the the stone windmill, the open sense that it, it's it's some of the most beautiful area and the most beautiful area in Highlands Ranch was part of the of the uh, conservation easement. Joe tells the story of how he got <coughs> Highlands Ranch re-entered into the RTD district. Highlands Ranch was not part of the Regional Transportation District. Uh, it had been originally, and I had uh, two great friends who were in the General Assembly. Uh, they were not married, but we drove them up to, uh, one evening, we drove them up to Daniels Park. It was a beautiful evening, and they're having such a great time, and they, in, in one of those little innocent moments, they say, now, Joe, is there anything we could? Is there anything you need? What what could you what could you want, Joe? Is there anything you want? I say, you know, there is something. I I I, I want to get Highlands Ranch in the regional transportation district. Oh, they said, well, let's see what we can do. So we we dreamt up this whole thing, and um, and we got Highlands Ranch by meets and bounds. Uh, annexed in, back into the R RTD. 
that we, we got the RTD. People always say that you know things happen from people who know each other. They do, and, and, yeah. and, and who know and trust each other. Yeah. Joe talks about his involvement with the establishment of law enforcement and training center in Douglas County. Tell me about your involvement, if you have. Uh, well, I I did, and and uh, typical of Jim Tepfer, he generous and thoughtful and responsive uh, to that. Um, you know, when Mission came here, they didn't want to be a um, an imposition on the sheriff, and they bought or they they bought a a vehicle for the yeah, for them, a car. and a car for them. But uh, out of that uh, idea was created the Highlands Ranch Law Enforcement Training Training Facility, and uh, it was a 501c3. And the sheriff of Douglas County, Steve Zotos, and the sheriff of Arapahoe County, and myself served as the board of governors, board of directors for them. And it became more and more and more useful, essential. Um, not just a, initially it was a firing range. Yes, that's right. And then they added a facility. And my old boss in the FBI had come out in the meantime to, to head up the Colorado Sheriff's Association, Jim O'Neill. And he um, helped us get a design for this thing. And we raised money to, to, to make it happen. Um, today, it's one of the finest <clears throat> training facilities around. Used People by, come from all over the world. All over the world. The, the, the Bureau, the FBI uses it uh, when, they, when they're here, if they need it. It's, it's, a remar it's a remarkable thing. Yeah, that was dedicated in 1987, <clears throat> yeah. I believe, yeah. at that point. And you're right, it's expanded a lot. Yes.